Okay, recording now. So, uh, as I said before, I'm Drew from NWA 3D, and we're going to talk about the process of 3D printing and what it all looks like. So, it's basically four steps to go through everything to 3D print. Um, the first step is going to be the biggest step, and it's going to be the most involved, and it's going to be the most difficult to jump into, but it's going to be the most fun and most rewarding, and the way that it's going to be integrated into your curriculum the most, and that's the design step, where the students are actually going to create the models and then 3D print them. And there are some fantastic programs that are out there um, that are free for schools that we love. Um, the first one that we always recommend is Tinkercad, so tinkercad.com, and I'll send you a link to that too um, with this training video as well, so you'll have it. And there's a bunch of tutorials on our website for it, and it's fantastic. Um, um, and another one that's really great uh, for elementary is SketchUp, too, if you want to check that out. SketchUp has a lot of really awesome things as well. And SketchUp is more like a traditional um, computer-aided design or CAD design program where you actually draw stuff in 2D, and then the students will pull it up and make it in 3D. Um, and it's a really great program as well. Um, and those are the two that we would recommend um, for elementary and middle school. Those are the best ones. And, and some students, if they're getting really good, they can jump into uh, Onshape. Uh, so onshape.com is another CAD design program where you also will pull uh, uh, elements out. So you'll take measurements and draw things in 2D and then pull them out to make complicated 3D objects. Um, and both uh, Onshape and uh, a Tinkercad work in a web browser. So they'll work on Chromebooks if your students have Chromebooks. So then they can just log into either a teacher account or their own accounts. Um, we, we found it's easier a lot of times to have like a classroom account that they all log into. And then everybody can uh, arrange their models and save it all in the cloud. And then when they're ready to take it out of the program, that's the second step of 3D printing. So once they design uh, a model, let's say that they were designing a part of a cell because they're learning about uh, cells. So they have their cell wall that they created and they want to 3D print their cell wall. Well, they have to have that in a file type that's called .stl or .obj. And you can get to that in Tinkercad by just clicking export, and then it's going to pop up with a big thing that says download for 3D printing, and that's what you click on. And then that .stl file, that's what we're going to put inside of Cura. So that's what Cura is. Cura is like the program that codes the digital file that the students make for the printer. So it's kind of like a translator that's going to translate that on the printer. So then Cura is going to translate it for the printer. And then the third step you're going to do is you're going to transfer that file to the printer. So to do that, you'll save it on to the SD cards. So you're going to save it on one of the SD cards using a little uh, you know, USB stick uh, adapter. And you'll save it onto the SD card and then put that SD card in the front of the printer. And then the fourth step and the final step is you'll just hit print from the printer and control it on the screen. So that's kind of how the whole overview of 3D printing looks. You're gonna create a file, and then when your students get that file created, then they're gonna put it in uh, Cura. And Cura can, can be um, on any Windows or Mac computer. Uh, it's any Windows or Mac computer compatible. And then once it's in Cura, you're gonna save that to the SD, far, uh, SD card, so transfer that and then hit print on the printer to print it out. So you're gonna create, and then you're gonna slice, and then transfer, and then actually print it. So those four steps are kind of how everything is gonna, uh, is gonna look. So do you have any questions about how that kind of flows through? I don't think so. Nope. No? Okay, awesome. So uh, let's go ahead and jump into Cura and talk about those settings a little bit. So I'll share my screen with you so you guys can see it. I'm going to shrink this up. And if you hit escape, then that will shrink the full screen window. So Cura is basically going to be how the printer is going to print your model. So this area right here is like the blue checkerboard right here. And that's going to be your maximum build size, which is this. And we're going to set that. And then we also have to set these settings here on the side to have more optimal 3D prints. So these settings over here on the side are going to be uh, a little bit different. So yours is going to be when you install a new machine, just like we did before, you're going to click Add New Machine, and then you'll hit Next, and then you're going to say Other. So this is that uh, screen that pops up when you first install Cura, and then you'll hit Next, and then Mendel is the operating system, so right here, M-E-N-D-E-L, and then Next, and then Finish. And then you'll see these are what your numbers probably look like. So the first thing we're going to look at is the layer height. And that's actually how close together each one of the layers are to 3D print. So this is basically a robotic hot glue gun that's going to go around and stick filament together, which is a material that it melts, layer by layer by layer into the shape that the students design on a computer. So 
the layer height is how close together those lines are. Um, for a low quality print that's going to print faster, you can say 0 0.3 millimeters. So each line is going to be 3 tenths of a millimeter apart. Or for a really high quality print, you can go all the way down to a tenth of a millimeter. Um, and that will take longer to print, but it'll look a lot better at the end. So it's kind of up to you on where you want to print. We like to print at 0 0.2, though. We find that uh, most things look really awesome um, at 2 tenths of a millimeter. So the shell thickness is the next thing that we're going to change. So you can go ahead and highlight that and then type 0 0.8 on the shell thickness, because that is going to be a multiple of our nozzle size. And the, the shell thickness is actually the thick part of the outside of our model. So the outside part of our shell is how many layers is going to be on the outside. And 0 0.8 will mean that that's going to go through at least two passes to make sure that it's going to be str a stronger and more durable model. So we put that at 0 0.8. And then we'll also put this bottom and top thickness at 0 0.8. And then you'll see this has turned yellow. And yellow means that it might not work exactly like it's supposed to. So what we're going to do is we're going to go down here and change our nozzle size to 0 0.4, because that's why it's yellow. Because it doesn't realize that the nozzle size is not correct. So here, like even when I delete this, now it's really confused because it doesn't know all the values that it needs. And then now when I put 0 0.4, it went back to being clear. And you can also see when you scroll over, it'll give you a little paragraph and it'll tell you more about what each one of them does. So the fill density, that can be anywhere between 0% if you want it to be hollow or 100% if you want it to be solid. But most of the time, we print around 5 to 20%. And that's the actual crosshatch pattern that's inside of the print. And I took my demo out of here right now to look. But I think you're here. I got another one right here in this box. Here we go. So this is what the infill looks like. So it's like a crosshatch pattern that fits inside of the outside part of your model. So here's the outside layer, and then you have the crosshatch pattern that fills it up. And that is the setting that's right here. So we can go ahead and leave that at 20. It's totally fine to leave there. And then the print speed is how fast it's going to print. So that one's easy. And we always recommend printing at about 50 millimeters a second as the top speed, because if you go too much faster than that, it can actually knock the model loose because this is moving around really, really fast. Um, so we like to print at 50 millimeters a second, so it's more reliable to print. Um, the next thing that you want to do is you want to change the temperature to 220 degrees Celsius. And that's the temperature of the nozzle. So the only part that's going to get hot is the nozzle that's underneath this heat shield. So none of this other part of it gets hot at all, only the bottom of the nozzle. So it's really difficult for students to even get to it. The only way that they would is they'd have to knock the model out of the way to be able to push in to be able to get to the heated part of the nozzle itself. And then the last thing is going to be the bed temperature for the heat. And that's going to be zero. Because this does not have a heated bed. Although the larger printer does, the uh, A31 that you guys have in there does have a heated bed. And then next we're going to go to support, and this is we're going to say uh, everywhere on support. And then if it needs supports, it's going to automatically generate them. Um, and that, that means that if you're printing a model that has like an overhang, like if you're going to do a door frame or something that didn't have anything in the middle, it would just droop down unless you had a support that it would print automatically inside of it. And then you just pop those supports out when you're done using the pliers. So you can use the clippers or the pliers that come with, uh, with your printer to be able to just clip those right out of there. So you can just use these and then clip them right out. So then the last thing that we're going to change is going to be the filament diameter. And we're going to change this to 1.75. And that's the thickness of this right here. And you can see it's actually written right here, 1.75. Right there. And then now all these settings are set up. And they're going to re be remembered automatically unless a student logs into a different account. So it's going to be remembered on this account. But if a student logs into a different account on the same machine, it's going to reset all these settings. So that's where the printer profile comes in. So we'll quickly load all of these settings. Um, and you can find that one on your SD card um, as well inside of the same folder that you got this out of in the Cura folder. So now what we're going to do is we're going to set the sizes of our bill plate right here. So to set this size up, we're going to click machine, and then we're going to go to machine settings right here. And then we're going to set the width, depth, and height 
to the maximum size of this NWA3DA5. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to the width first, and that's going to be 125. And then the depth is going to be across, and that's going to be 150. That's is about, about six inches. And then the height is 100, or about four inches. So what you're doing is you're telling the printer where its boundaries are. How far wide, how, how tall, how far back. That's what exactly. we're saying. Yeah, and, that's, that, and those always stay the same. But see that printer, it's back there in that corner? That one is 12 by 12 by 12. <laughs> so it's going to be like 600 or 800 or some goofy number. like 300 by 300 by 400. So you only have to set this once and it saves it. But let's say I'm logged into this computer. So these settings are saved for me. If you come in and log in, these are all default out and they won't be the same mm -hmm. for the printer. But we're going to try to get laptops that sign in with students so they don't have one login. Yeah. So once you set the printer settings, they should all be the same. But it's also good. Kids will start to learn and know. And some of those settings they can tweak just a hair. Uh, you might have one where they built something a little bit too big and you can change the 125 to like 127 and it will work mm -hmm. and it's still kind of catching the edge but it'll still print if they have something that's really big um so it's it's good for them to kind of kind of understand those settings uh in the print process themselves yeah and if you want to go like it, there's a little bit of give between each one of these numbers but that's why we set them back a little bit about five millimeters um, all the way around. Um, just, to, just to give you a little bit more space um, and to keep the nozzle from like running into these clips and stuff like that. So um, it helps have it like a little bit closer together. So we'll click this heated bed right here. We're gonna uncheck that. And then that's gonna be the last setting that we change. And then this whole thing is the screenshot that's found on the SD card. So if you uh, open up your SD card, you'll see that that is the screenshot that's on there. Um, to be able to set all those settings. So we're going to go ahead and click OK. And then to load a model into Cura, that's going to be that second step where we're going to take our model and load it into Cura. So we're going to click Load, and then you'll navigate to a 3D model. So in my case, um, let's see, I got this. Uh, how about this expansion hub that's for a uh, FRC robot? I'll go ahead and click on this one because I know it's going to be way too big. So when I click Open, once I've clicked on my .stl file, I'll click Open right here. That's well, not too bad. And then uh, once we have this, then what we're gonna do is we are gonna take uh, this and, and we're gonna actually scale it or change the size of it. If we wanted to have something that's gonna be an exact size, you can use your digital caliper to measure something to prototype. So you could prototype everything from a doorstop to feet for the bottoms of chairs to maybe making um, different parts for a robot or you wanna make a keychain. All those different things you can use this for as a measuring tool and it is just, basically just a digital ruler that you'll measure what's in between these two pinchers right here to get an exact measurement. So if you're not worried about that, then we can actually scale this to be however big that we want it. So we can click on this and click scale, and then we can drag this size up to be whatever size that we want. And you can see the time is changing right here. And as long as it's yellow, then it's 3D printable. And you can hold the right mouse button and kind of move your view around a little bit. You can zoom in and out by using the scroll wheel. And you can move this around, but if it's on the gray part, then it's not gonna be printable. So you wanna make sure that this is yellow. And then if it's yellow, you wanna also make sure that if it needs supports, then it automatically generates them. So that's why I have this everywhere uh, support set up right there. So if it ever needs supports, it's gonna automatically generate it. So this is gonna take 14 minutes, and it's gonna be, um, 0.35 meters or a gram of filament. And you have a thousand grams of filament on one of these rolls. So it can print a whole bunch of models. And uh, one of the things that, that uh, we like to do is to make sure that the orientation of this is set up the best for 3D printing too. So if you look over here, you can click view mode and then you can go to layers. And when I look at my layers, I can see kind of around here that each one of these layers, so the red is going to be my model itself. So when I move this down, you can see what each individual layer is going to do. So the red is my model and the turquoise, that's my support. So I can see that the support structure is there in the inside of that. And I can think like, hmm, maybe there's another way that I could do this. So let's go ahead and check it. So let's go ahead, go back to normal. 
And then we can click rotate and actually rotate our model. So what if we move this around and then lay it down flat? So by dragging on these, these bars right here, you can actually rotate your model to have a, the best print orientation possible. So you don't have to use tons of supports or the flattest part is on the ground level with your bill plate. So now let's go ahead and check this out. So let's see if I go to normal now and go from normal to layers. Now it's made a support structure all the way around. But you can see it's now going to take six minutes instead of 14. So by increasing that, I now have a different type of layer. And when I can even scroll down a little bit, I move this down. You can see that now it has stuff though that's filled in the inside of this. So you can see these lines going back and forth. So this isn't going to be the best orientation either because it's going to be harder to pull this stuff out of the center of this block. So if I click view and go back to normal, then I can change this back. So I can even click reset if I want to move it back up. So when you have your model and you're ready to 3D print, then you're going to need to save it to the SD card. So to do that, you'll click save right here. And if you have an SD card that's plugged in, then it'll save it automatically to the SD card. So if you, you can click save toolpath though and save it wherever you'd like. So if you wanted to save it on the desktop, then you could save that straight on the desktop and you can even name it something um, that's going to be descriptive so you know exactly what it is. And then you'll just hit save. And then this file, this G code file here, this is what the printer is going to read. So this is what needs to be on the SD card when you save it on the SD card. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and grab my SD cards off my desk right now. So I was using it a little bit ago. I've got my extra one in here. To save it on there so we can print together. Here we go. So if you plug your SD card in, if you want to grab one of those little USB connectors and you can plug the SD card into the computer, you can save the robot or another model if you want to the SD card. Um, you can load as many models as you want as long as they turn yellow. So I can click on this and I could load uh, maybe this phone mount too and uh, load as many things as I want in here as long as they're yellow. But you have to be careful though because if it looks really, really tiny, then it might be too small for the printer to actually print. So it's going to take a little bit of practice to, uh, to be able to move everything around and get it all exactly how you want it to be. And that's kind of part of the fun of 3D printing, of your students figuring out what type of orientation they'll want to print it in and how they're going to want to be able to print their models. So you can go ahead and click right here if you have your SD card and it'll save it automatically to the SD card. Or you can right click and click save G-code and then select your SD card and then you can save it on the SD card that way as well. So I've got it selected and I've gone to my SD card right here. Yours will say NWA3D. And then hit save. So like right here, if I wanted to do that little robot guy, it's going to take 37 minutes for him to print. And I have the SD card up there. So if I click the SD card, it will then save it on that. And then when I pull that out, I can select it. Mm -hmm. So you want to save that robot on there? Then you have it? Uh, yeah, I have the robot on there. I went ahead and hit save on the SD card. So it's saved. Okay, right. So then now we can ex uh, we can... Hold on, she, she just, she got a question. Hold on just a second, Drew. Yeah, sure, what's up? And I don't know if this makes sense or not, but if, okay, if we know this is where we're going to with this printer, then why do we have to say that it's the largest it could be? I mean, if we know which one we're using, we always still have to tell how large it can be. In 3D you, printing, you build a 3D design, okay. but the problem is, is a printer doesn't talk in three-dimensional design. What it talks is in layers of x y and z okay. so it's going to move to a certain layer and spit out some plastic so what happens is we have to have what's called a slicer program that's what cura is cura takes this 3d model and it imagine hitting it with a thousand blades and making these little bitty tiny slices and those slices are what that's making layer per layer at a time and so you've got to tell cura what its boundaries are uh, depending on what, what printer you're setting up. So we could have six different 3D printers in here, and depending on which one we were printing at, we would have to change the settings in Cura to match that printer, because think of it as them talking different languages. One's Chinese, one's French, one's Dutch, and so we gotta tell Cura what that language is so that that, that print head will stay in its boundaries. Uh, occasionally a kid will get the wrong setting and they'll pull a riffraff or something and they'll or an ultimaker which is a 
a print bed that's this big. Well, in that screen, if they put it in the middle of a bed this big, mm -hmm. that would still be off that bed because it's wider. Even the middle, see that big one that's back there? If I'm in the middle of that one, that would still be off this platform because that one is three of these little decks. So if I hit print, it's going to try to go to this X, Y, Z spot that yeah, we gonna, thought was the move past this point. And it's going to go because it can't yeah. get there because it's not far enough. So by us telling Cura, hey, it's not this big of a print bed, it's this big, now that middle would be three inches here. If we accidentally print on that big one, even though it's in the middle on Cura, it would not print in the middle of that. It would find a square that 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 big on the left side and yep. it print in the middle of that square. So does that make sense kind of on those settings for the most part? Uh, yes, somewhat. What I'm hoping is when we have those other machines, uh, you won't have to mess with the major machine settings. They'll kind of be set and locked in for the most part because I don't think she's going to do a full on <laughs> computer lab in here. I think that she'll do student login windows based machines okay go ahead drew yeah no problem that's exactly right um that, that's a really good description because you want to make sure that the printer knows what it's where it's actually going to print because the g code is going to go over anything that the settings of the printer itself has because the g code is kind of like um the law uh, so it's going to tell like no matter what the g code says the printer is going to follow it even if the printer is like i don't think i'm supposed to be able to do that but the GCO is like, that's what you have to do. So it's going to keep trying to move out there to those outside edges. So that's why we set um, all those settings up like that. So to eject it, that's that third step. So we just did the second step, the, the slicing step with Cura. So we got our model and we put it inside of Cura. So we're going to eject it to transfer it to our printer itself. And that we'll do by taking the SD card like out of your adapter. So either the uh, micro adapter that you have or the USB one. And then this is going to go in the front of the printer. So Ms. Pearson, if you want to just stick this in the front of the printer, you'll see this little slot right here that it goes with the letters facing up and slides and clicks into this slot. And you click it in and click it out right there underneath the knob. So it's like directly underneath the knob, you'll see this little part that clicks in and clicks out. I see that y'all got rid of the on off for the screens. You got tired yeah. of troubleshooting that? Yeah, that was, we got kind of sick of it. <laughs> yeah, so got an upgrade that doesn't have that anymore. There used to be an on off button for the screen. Yeah, because you know, the screens would go dim and you couldn't tell, you couldn't really see everything and everybody thought that their screens were going out. So. Screens are out, it's not because I accidentally hit the button. I did it myself. Okay, she's got the card in and we do oh. not have plastic loaded or anything like oh, that. Oh yeah, that's totally fine. So, let me switch my camera here. So there's, that's the, the whole process of going through. All that we would need to do if the filament was loaded and it was plugged in, we would just hit this button, select our print, and then it would print. And that's those four steps. So we, we created the file in Tinkercad, we put it into Cura, we saved it to the SD card, and then we're gonna hit print on the printer, which we're gonna do here in a second, but first we need to make sure that our printer is ready to go. So the troubleshooting issues that arise the most are four big ones. The first one has to do with uh, making sure that all the settings in Cura are set up. So um, as Jeff was talking about before, making sure that the sizes are correct, and making sure that the settings on the side, that we all those little numbers are correct, and all those different settings are uh, set up for this type of printer. And if all those settings are set up, then uh, that's a digital um, issue that could arise from it. If it starts making weird noises or, or something else that it's just not really doing what it's supposed to be doing, going and checking those settings is usually the, uh, the best place to start, just to make sure that all those look like they're supposed to look. The second thing we can do right now, and you can actually, it'd be great if you guys kind of walk around and do it with all the printers that are in there, is to make sure that the machines themselves are not damaged and there's nothing wrong with them. So you want to make sure that there aren't any cracked parts you want to make sure that there aren't any parts that look broken, like one machine doesn't look like the other ones. You also want to make sure that the plugs are plugged in. So you want to make sure that these plugs are plugged into these motors all the way around. So there's an X and then an E, which feeds the filament out, 
a Z, which goes up and down, and then the Y, which goes back and forth. So make that sure those are plugged in. And these little switches are plugged in too that are right there. Because sometimes when you move them around a lot, the little switches can come undone. So you want to check on those switches and make sure that they're all set up. And then also just pick it up and look at the bottom too and make sure that there isn't a big crack that goes along the bottom that nothing's cracked on them. They all look like they're pretty all right. And just kind of give it a good overview to make sure it all looks good. So what do you think? Does it does it look like it's cracked or anything uh, anything damaged on it? No, not on this one. And while you're still instructing, I'll go ahead and kind of look at some of the new ones that came in. Okay, yeah, that'd be awesome. So th that's the step that you want to do just to make sure that um, the machine integrity is, uh, is all together on it. So it's kind of the ma machine integrity step to make sure that there's nothing broken or the screen's not cracked or anything else like that. Um, if anything does happen, we have a warranty on these that literally covers everything. So anything that goes wrong um, with the printers, then let us know and, and I'll send you a link to our, our support and we, we will make sure that it gets fixed. So it's our goal to make sure that they never just stay broken and sitting in a corner somewhere and not being used. We always wanna help and make sure that they're working. So don't ever think that you're gonna bug us or anything because that's our main goal is to make sure that they're running. So if you're ever having issues with anything, whether it's broken or whether it gets the student knocks it off the table or a student cuts one of the cords or you're, just having a whole lot of trouble getting it level, which we're about to talk in a second, then contact our support because that's what we're here to help with. Um, we want to help make sure that you have all the tools that you need and your students have all the tools that they need to be able to 3D print. So um, your students too can also fill out the tech support and we'd love to do all tech support with students. So if you want to have students contact us, we'll work through with them too um, to be able to do tech support as well. So once you know that uh, the printer itself doesn't look broken and all your settings and cure are correct, then we're going to go to the third biggest step, and that is making sure that the bill plate itself is level. So to do that, we're going to make sure first that it's plugged in. So go ahead and plug it in. Okay. Right, it's already plugged in. Yep. You're good? Got it plugged in? Yep. Okay, awesome. And then now what we're going to do is we're going to tap the button, and then we're going to go to where it says set up by spinning it. And then we're going to go to auto home and then tap that. And you just spin and tap the button to control it. So we'll go to setup and then auto home. And then that will move it to zero. Perfect. So the reason that we want to set it with auto home first is to make sure that the nozzle is far enough away from the bill plate, but not too far. So if it's too close, it's gonna dig into the bill plate and no filament is gonna come out. But if it's too far away, it's gonna knock models loose or turn into a giant pile of spaghetti. So we wanna make sure that the printer itself is the correct distance from the bill plate. And to check that, you wanna use a piece of printer paper. So if you wanna get a piece of printer paper and then just fold it in half, hot dog or, ham or hamburger, that's what we're gonna to use to level it. And we're first gonna level it with it being cold and not heating this nozzle up. Because if you heat the nozzle up and it's not quite level, it can actually dig into the bill plate and like cause some scuff marks and stuff. And even though that's okay, you can just scrape them flat. This first time to check, we're just gonna do it without doing that just so we don't damage it. So once it stops moving, let me know. Yes. Stop? Okay, awesome. So go ahead and tap the button again. And then spin back to setup, and then go to where it says disable motors, and then tap that. So now you can move these back and forth freely. So if you put your, your hand on here, you can move this back and forth, and then you can move this back and forth as well. So grab this, okay, and move. Okay. So what we're gonna do is we are gonna make sure that the, the nozzle we're gonna make sure that the nozzle is the correct distance from the piece of paper and also the correct distance from the bill plate. And the blue part is the bill plate. Uh-oh. I thought I had to go to the office. Anyway, I have to go to the office. Hold on just a second. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. She got I've been called, summoned. called to the office. I wanted to kill me over the 
That's all right. We can pick up in a second. Here, I'll. Uh, yeah, I can go ahead and I'll. Uh, let me pause. All right, I resumed the recording, so we're back. So uh, what we're going to do then is we're going to level and make sure that the nozzle is the thickness of the folded sheet of paper from the bill plate. So I'm going to show you by picking my printer up, but you want to make sure that you keep yours flat on the table and kind of rotate it. So I'll kind of go over what to do first, and then you can you can give it a shot, and then I'll kind of like walk you through it, and I'm sure Jeff will walk you through it too of anything that, uh, that you guys need to work through. So what we'll do is we're going to move this and then move this right here. This is this is what the uh, extruder is inside of. And that's what the, what melts the plastic. We're gonna move it to this top corner right here. And then once we move it to that corner, if you pick it up, well, I'm gonna pick mine up to show you, but uh, you'll keep your slide on the table. But you'll see that this right here, this knob, is pretty much lined up with where this nozzle is. So you can even pull this back a little bit. So the nozzle is lined up with this knob underneath here. And this knob is what you're gonna adjust to move the plate up and down. And that's what we're gonna move to adjust it. So You'll take your piece of paper, and the thickness of this piece of this folded sheet of paper, that's how far away the nozzle needs to be from the bill plate, which is the blue part that says NWA3D. So we're going to put this between here. And if it doesn't fit very well, you can actually push down on the bill plate. And you, don't worry, you won't damage it. And then you can fit this between it, like that. So then you have the piece of paper between it. And then what we'll do is we're going to move this piece of paper by wiggling it, and then we're gonna adjust this nozzle here on the, this knob on the bottom so it moves up or down. So to move it up and closer, we're actually gonna turn this knob clockwise. So if we turn it like a fourth of a turn clockwise and then try to move the paper, it'll eventually be dragging and you'll feel the paper vibrating on the nozzle to where it's just barely able to move the paper. And that's where you want it to be with quite a bit of tension. But if it's too close so it doesn't move at all, then you'll move it the opposite direction. So you'll move this to actually tighten this and if you tighten it it pulls this away and if you loosen it it pushes it up closer so if you move it to tighten it then it makes it looser on top when you tighten this wing nut and then you're going to do the same thing for this wing nut and then you're going to move it over and do the same thing for this this wing nut and then there's one more under here in the middle that you're going to move this whole thing over and the paper and all and do it to the one in the middle and you want to go one at a time and you want to try to go in real small increments so we'll start on this one where we'll adjust it a little bit and then turn about a fourth of a turn and then test it. And then about a fourth of a turn and then test it. And about a fourth of a turn and then test it. Until we feel it dragging on the paper. And quite a bit of drag. Now have I got it, I can't tell. Is that even with our extruder here? No. So if I had you want to line that up. How do I do that? See, you just move this okay. moves this way. Mm -hmm. This moves that way. So I got it this way. Get it lined up. Okay. And so here again, we're going to move it, tighten it. That's too tight. Loosen it. Again, you just want. Some grit. Grit's good. Okay. And you want it to be so close that it's like dragging and leaving marks on the paper when you move it. <laughs> and this one is the booger. See how it's stuck up in that hole? Mm -hmm. So it's kind of hard. What I do is I will put it where I think it's close, right? And right now I know yeah. that's too loose. And I pull it out, I okay. make the adjustment, mm -hmm. and then I go back in to see how it is. Because okay. it's hard for me to put my hand in there and adjust it. Oh, 
And this is something that you won't have to do very often. So this is like once every couple months even, you'll be doing this and your students can absolutely do this. Um, I would say from even like third grade up can be able to level this bill plate and they can figure this out because we've had classes have a lot of success with it. Okay. I think we got the bill plate. Yeah. Level. Okay, awesome. So yeah, you can go ahead and pull the paper out. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna raise this whole gantry, this whole thing up a little bit so we can put the filament in. So to do that, we're gonna tap on the button right here. Go ahead and tap on it. And then we're gonna move it to where it says controls. And then tap that. And then from controls, we're gonna to go to where it says move axis and tap that. And then move one millimeter, one mm, and tap that. And then we're going to go to the Z, to the where it says move Z, and that's the up and down. And then we're going to tap that. And then go ahead and just spin it till it goes to like 30 or 40. And you'll see that is just going to raise this up. And the reason that we do that is we want to be able to, to push filament through to see it coming out of the end of the nozzle. So we don't want it to have it touching the build surface. And this build surface is made to get really dinged up. And it's, it's made to where your filament and everything will stick to it. And then when you're ready to remove your prints, you just take these clips off. And then you can take this whole thing off and you can bend it a little bit or you can get your spatula underneath it to be able to pop the prints out easier. And you can also scrape it and get any other filament stuff that might be on there. And if it gets really dirty, then just use some like 90% alcohol or a little bit of acetone to wipe it down and wipe off any like finger oils and things like that um, or filament that might be kind of stuck to it. And the one downside to this uh, that we found is it's great for all kinds of stuff to stick to it. But if it's leveled too close, then your model uh, will be stuck really, really hard to the build surface because it works almost too well. So if that ever happens to where it's so close that you can't scrape something up, then if you print a model on top of that, just kind of adjust it a little bit so the nozzle's a little bit higher up and then print the same model again, but only let it do like the first layer. And then you can stop the print by just unplugging it and then you can peel it up and you can peel up that old stuff that's stuck down really, really easily. And if you ever run into a problem with that or something's giving you trouble, then contact our support and we'll walk you through every step of the way to get it off of there. So what we're going to do now is we're going to load the filament in, but before we can load the filament, we have to heat the nozzle up. So to load or unload the filament, you have to have the nozzle heated because it has to be able to liquefy the end of it. So what we're going to do is we're going to heat this up by tapping this button and then move into where it says setup and then preheat PLA because that's what this material is called, PLA or polylactic acid and it's biodegradable corn plastic. Um, Yep, preheat PLA. And then you'll see the temperature is starting to go up right here. So if you want to unload the filament, when it comes time to do that, you'll go to the same spot, you'll tap setup, but then instead of hitting preheat PLA, you'll say preheat soft pull. And that will heat it up to 100 degrees and allow you to remove the filament. And it always has to be heated before you can take the, the filament out, but you want to make sure that um, you don't ever have to preheat it before you print or anything like that. It'll always do that automatically for you because if it stays heated and the filaments inside of it, it can actually bake inside of here too. So you want to make sure that just you can leave it off all the time and unplugged. And then when you're ready to print, just stick that SD card in there, plug this in and then hit print and you can leave the filament loaded and everything. So while this is loading up, we're going to go ahead and feed our filament in. So do you guys have the spool holders yep. that are put together? Yep. You get that form, Jeff? These right here? Okay, awesome. So I'll go ahead and put mine together real quick. And you'll see that the filament's going to sit on there kind of like an axle. And that's what's going to feed into your printer. So you always want to make sure that when you're not using the filament, you pull it through this hole here in the side too. Because that's going to prevent it just like weed ear line or like fishing line, it can get tangled. So by pulling it through right here, you can make sure that it stays nice and taut so it won't get pulled out. Um, when you're ready to load it, we're gonna clip this melted end off. So you see how you can kind of see mine's got a little bit of green stuff on it? That's because that was the old filament that was in there. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this and I'm gonna clip off that melted end at a point to make it easier to feed in with my clippers. And then this is what we're gonna feed into the printer. It seems to make it 
And then this part right here in the back, this is where you're going to feed it. So you're going to squeeze this lever and feed it through this hole and then through here and then all the way through this white tube until it won't go through anymore. So we'll put it right here and then we'll squeeze this and then feed it through here and then all the way through this white tube by just holding it and pushing. And it'll feed all the way through until it won't go anymore. And then once it's heated up, you can actually hold this and push it a little bit more. And then that will push it out of the end of the nozzle. And that can actually like push out an old clog and, uh, and, and push any of the old filament out and all those other things too by just squeezing this and then feeding it through. And sometimes it gets kind of tricky to stick it through right here so you can kind of wiggle it a little if it gets stuck. And then clipping it at a point helps a lot with that as well. And then now you'll see that I've got a little bit of filament coming out of the end right there. So I'll use my pliers to reach in here because that nozzle's hot. We always want to use our tools. But the filament itself cools right away. So this is already cool. And then we're ready to print. I feel some resistance. It's pouring. They tested it with probably red. Um, Have we got blue yet? Uh, kind of a purple again. Okay, so that means blue's coming through. Okay. Is it solid blue yet? Yes. It's kind of a yep. Okay. That's the same color as that. So now okay. your plastic's loaded and it's coming through. Okay. Okay. We're loaded, Drew. Awesome. So now let's all load it up. Go ahead and unplug it. You just pull this right out of the side. Which part? This part? Yep, that right there. Yep. Exactly. So by keeping it simple, there are less things to go wrong. And then also by unplugging it, this is something that we always want to have when we're not printing, just have it unplugged. Because if there's, uh, if the nozzle's heated up and the filament's loaded in it, it can, like I said, cause a clog. And the easiest way to prevent that is to just, when you're not using it, just have it unplugged. You can leave the filament loaded in it, it's totally fine. It's just ready to go as soon as you plug it in. So that's what we're gonna do now. We're gonna plug it in and then we're gonna hit print. And we're gonna print the model that you put on there. So normally you don't unplug it before you print. Yeah. Okay. I was saying that doesn't make any sense to me. For long term storage, yes. you can leave the filament in. Wouldn't advise it, but you could. Yeah. Filament can be in with it cold. Okay. You don't want to leave this on with it at tip of 220 and filament in it because it'll eventually burn the plastic in there and stick to the sides and you'll have a clog. Okay. So, to prevent clogs, uh, you want to make sure the filament's not just left in it with mm -hmm. it at a high temp. Can you pull it back now? There's a soft pull. You set that. It set it sets it to 100, and you'll go over this in just a minute. And then when you pull the plastic out at 100, it also helps because it's it's not fully melted, but it's not too hard, and so it's kind of soft melted around the outside. So if there's any debris in there, it sticks to that debris and pulls it out with it. And so it helps keep from having clogs. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. All right, so then to print, you're just going to put that SD card in there, just like we did in the front, and then we'll tap this button, and then we're going to go to where it says refresh SD card, and we tap that, and we'll just do that just to reload everything, so if you ever take the SD card out, that's what you'll do to refresh it, so the, the machine will know that the SD card's in there, and then you'll scroll up to where it says print from SD, and tap that, and then when you tap that, you'll see all the stuff that you saved on there, so here is my expansion hub mount right there that I can tap on to be able to print. So I'll just tap on it, and then now it's gonna heat up to 220 degrees, then it's gonna zero itself out on X, Y, and Z because we leveled it, and then it's gonna start printing. So the robot is just gonna go. And you wanna make sure that you always watch the first two layers to make sure that they're sticking. And if they both look like they're sticking to the build plate, then that means that it's level, and you're probably gonna have a really successful print. You just wanna watch those first two levels, those first two layers. That kind of kind of leaks a little bit, and a lot of times 